Hey friends, Jane the Librarian here. In this video, we're going to talk about mapping. No, not that kind of map. We're going to use mapping as a tool to brainstorm, organize ideas, and refine a topic for your research paper. We're also going to see how mapping can help you identify gaps in your knowledge and come up with keywords to start searching for information. Finally, we'll take a look at the mind map feature in the library's Credo reference database and how you could use that for your own research. You might hear this idea referred to as concept mapping or mind mapping. I'm just going to use the term mapping in this video. In a nutshell, mapping is creating a visual representation of how ideas are connected. Maybe you've created a map before as a way to organize class notes or review material for a test. You can draw maps by hand or use a software program like Microsoft Word or Publisher. There are also free or low-cost web apps out there for mapping. Today I'm using Google Jamboard, which is basically a digital whiteboard available in Google Drive. I like the sticky note feature for mapping. Like everything else in Google Drive, Jamboard is collaborative, so if you're working with a classmate, you can share and work on the same board. You can download the Jamboard app or look for it in your Google Drive. Create a new one by clicking New, More, Google Jamboard. Start by writing your main research topic or question in the middle of your map. You can circle it or make it big to show it's the center. In this example, I'm going to use an actual research topic I helped an English 1301 student with last year. Her topic was why people should adopt instead of buying a dog. So let's start by representing the main concepts for each one of those things, adoption and buying. I'm going to color code them because I have that ability in Jamboard, but use whatever system works best for you. Once you have your main research topic represented, your next step is to put down everything you already know about the topic. So we can start by putting some things we already know about adoption, like that it can happen through shelters and rescue organizations who take in strays. Buying a dog might happen through pet stores or breeders. You can connect ideas with lines, you can color code, make ideas more important by making them bigger or less important by making them smaller. Use whatever system of visual organization makes sense to you. Maps don't have to be neat or perfect. They just represent the ways different ideas might connect and that can be messy. Now we can start adding some ideas that are specific to our thesis about why adoption is better than buying a dog. When I helped my student with this topic, she had gotten stuck on this step. So we used a map to help figure out reasons why adopting is good, but also why buying a dog might be bad. Some of the reasons we brainstormed had to do with overpopulation in shelters. Buying instead of adopting might lead to dogs being euthanized, especially in what are called high kill shelters. We also wanted to investigate things like puppy mills and health problems that dogs that come from pet stores or unreliable breeders have been known to have, like parvo. Finally, we thought about possible objections people might have to adopting a rescue pet. Maybe they want a specific breed of dog and came up with potential solutions like breed specific rescues. We might also put on the concept map things we don't know, but things we want to find out in order to support our argument. For example, maybe we want to find out statistics to know how many people and dogs this affects, how many dogs are adopted versus purchased. Or maybe we want to know about inspection and regulation of dog breeders to find out if that's a safer option than rescue. Or maybe we want to know about standards for owners. You might know that some shelters require applications and references for potential adopters, but to pet stores? Finding out may help you make an argument that shelters are more careful about adopting dogs to responsible pet owners than pet stores. I want to sidebar for a minute to talk about the map feature in the library's Credo reference database. It has a mind map for most major topics like minimum wage. You can use Credo's mind map both to see connected ideas to your topic as well as find general background information on any word you see in the map. In this example, minimum wage is the main concept in the middle of the map. I see similar terms like salary and income, so I can add those to my list of keywords about this topic. 
But there may also be some concepts connected to the minimum wage that I don't know about yet, like living wage or the Fair Labor Standards Act. We can click on a term and the mind map will reform with that in the middle and new related ideas around it. It will also give you new search results on the left, so you can read more from specialized encyclopedias to understand that term. You can use the recent links at the bottom of the map to go back to your original term anytime. So if you're at a point in your research where you don't really know enough about your topic to fully map it, you might need to go do some background research on the topic, the Credo Reference Database is great for that, and then come back and add it to your map. Okay, so now that we have our map, it's important to know that you don't have to write about every single thing you may have written down on the map. But now we have lots of keywords we can use to search for information on our topic, and we have lots of avenues of research to go down. So instead of trying to research this one giant topic like why adopting a dog is better than buying a dog, we can research these smaller questions like what kinds of health problems do dogs in pet stores have? Or does buying dogs contribute to overpopulation in shelters? Exploring and answering those questions will help formulate the specific points you want to make in your main body paragraphs and contribute to the answer of your overall research question. Save your concept map when you're done. You can keep adding to it or shifting things around as you learn about your topic. In Google Jamboard, you can save this as a PDF or image or open it any time from your Google Drive menu. If you have questions about mapping or research, get in touch with a librarian. You can contact any SciFair librarian six days a week for help.